and gentlemen, welcome to SciShow Quiz Show. It's time to get busy with the quizzy. Ah, oh my goodness, that's my favorite. <laughs> I'm your host, Michael Ronda, and today on the show we have a uh, Snapchat celebrity, Hank Green. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> Hank GRE on Snapchat. We also have pygmy goat enthusiast, <laughs> Phil Plate. Is that a thing? Mm. It is now, apparently. All right. Well, you yeah. better study up. Yeah. Because it's all going to be pygmy goat questions. Are, Excellent. Are they actually pygmy goats? There was some confusion about pygmy versus dwarf. You have goats. I have no idea what the difference is, actually. Uh, but you... They're just little goats, and they eat everything, and then they get all swollen, and then they, they <laughs> erectate uh, in, a, in a fashion that smells terrible. What was that word oh, they you said? Okay. A lot. Um, well, keep a them lot. out. Of, like, don't go face to face so much. They're well, you know, you kind of have to because they're adorable. Oh, so you're just like, mm, yeah, you're like, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Good. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hank will be competing on behalf of Will Clifton. Hi, Will. Phil is playing for Guy Greer. Hey, Guy. I'm going to start you off each with a thousand darsecs. Oh. Each time you answer a question correctly, you'll win 100 darsecs. If you answer incorrectly or fail to answer, you will lose 100 darsecs. I can do the Kessel Run in 12 darsecs. That's not what that is. No? Right. I mean... It's funnier in my head. It doesn't make any <laughs> sense either way. And that's true. Darsec is, is, is the uh, currency used by the Klingons. <clears throat> is that really true? I've never heard that. I've never heard darsecs either. And I'm either. like a big I, Star Trek dog. Yeah, me too. And I feel like they just never talk about their capitalism. The Klingons. They just take what they need. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So whoever has the most Darsex at the end wins. Stefan, what will our winners and losers take home today? Well, Michael, both Will and Guy will be taking home autographed cards from Hank and Phil with their final guesses and wagers on them, as well as either an I won SciShow Quiz Show pin or the highly valuable I lost SciShow Quiz Show pin. A super cool out of print Hank Green CD signed by the man himself. And the winner will also take home a copy of the script from this episode, plus some secret SciShow swag. Back to you, Michael. Okay, you guys ready? Round number one is about, well, you'll see. Is this true? <clears throat> uh, that's cheating. Is it? Yeah. That, yeah, that... Does this do anything? Yeah, it lights up. It's a tap oh, light from the does, 80s. It does light up. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Before the invention of electronics, if you needed to send a secret message, your options were pretty limited. You had to get kind of creative. Giambattista della Porta, 16th century Italian polymath, expert in all kinds of science and art. During the Spanish Inquisition, when he wanted to send messages to his friends that were in jail, came up with a way to hide messages in a common food item using an ink that would sink beneath the food's coating. Hmm. Did he hide his messages in oranges, in eggs, in walnuts, or in avocados? I'm gonna say uh, eggs. You are correct! All Porta needed for this trick was alum, a type of acidic salt, vinegar, wax, and galls, a kind of tree growth often used in ink. He would coat a boiled egg in wax and then use a metal tool to scrape out his message. That way, when he added the ink, it would only affect part of the shell, the shape of the letters. Then he'd combine the alum and galls, which formed a pale yellow ink, soak the egg in it, let it dry, and then put it in vinegar. Eggs have pores, little holes that go straight through the shell, and the acidic vinegar would soften the egg, making it easier for the ink to pass through the holes. Putting the egg in cold water would make it hard again, and the ink would wash off the shell. Then, he could bring the harmless-looking egg into a prison where a prisoner could peel it to read the message. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. Eggs, I know, I know eggshells are pretty permeable. Um, and avocados, we, did we even have avocados before the 1990s? Who knows? I'm pretty sure they were invented in the 90s. But if you crack the egg open and then you just get all this glop, what are you gonna read? Oh, it's a hard boiled egg. It's just egg. a dot. It's a hard, hard you boiled see, that egg. Would've, that would've yes. made a big difference. Yes, uh, I, was, I was like, how would, but then I figured yeah. they, that he hard boiled them first. Yeah. Actually, I kind of figured that too, but it was too late. <laughs> I would, have, I would have died in prison unmessaged. So eggs is our topic for oh, round number one. I know so much about eggs. Right? Excellent. Ever made one? Bet not. I have not made an egg. Aha. Correct. <laughs> Question <many>? two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Raising a kid can take a lot of time and energy, and some birds, called brood parasites, decide it's not worth the trouble. Mm -hmm. So they lay their eggs in another bird's nest and hope that that bird won't notice and then raise the chick as if it were its own. So that means that the legitimate babies get fewer resources. But the female species of one bird, known as the superb fairy wren, have come up with a way to tell the difference between their own offspring and the imposters. How do they do it? Is it marking their eggs with poop and rolling any unmarked new ones out of the nest, 
literally sniffing out which ones are their chicks, teaching their chicks a secret code before they hatch, or feeding all the chicks an insect that's poisonous to the brood parasites. Now what do we do? I don't know. Go at the first. same time. <laughs> uh, on three, one, two, three. E. A. Oh, we said on three. Um, well, <laughs> well, well, on three means on three. I say B. Well, somebody say was wrong. A. Were we both I think wrong? They sniff it out. Yeah. You're both. Oh, I you're thought both it was. Wrong. I thought it was that definitely is, poop. That is incorrect. Oh. The correct answer is that they teach their chicks a secret code. It's hard for a wren to figure out which chicks are the brood parasites without accidentally rejecting one of their own. So they teach their eggs a kind of password, making calls that have their own unique sound signature. Once the wren chicks hatch, the sounds they make when they beg for food incorporate that signature. The brood parasite chicks, in this case bronze cuckoos, don't use the password, so the mother wren knows which babies to feed. And researchers have found that if the wren hears more cuckoos in the area while she's nesting, she'll make more calls with the password, and when the chicks are born and start to make calls of their own, they're better at copying the code. There's a greater threat, so the mother wren puts more effort into her defenses. A secret code? I rolled my eyes at that! I saw! That's, that's <laughs> cuckoo. Oh! oh! And you know why that's really funny? Because that's what they it's, do. It is, it's a brood parasite. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Woo! Okay, <laughs> round number two is about sperm. Ooh. Okay. You've All made right. some of those. I made lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> Humans inherit most things equally from both of their parents since they get half of their DNA from each. But there are some exceptions. Like the mitochondria, which are like the, the, the power plants of the cell, come only from the egg. There's also another type of organelle that only comes from the sperm. Is it centrioles, lysosomes, ribosomes, or the endoplasmic reticulum? I have no idea. That's totally new information to me, and I'm really excited to hear the answer. I think it's I think it's that ectoplasm thing. I saw Endoplasmic that in, I saw that in Ghostbusters, and so <laughs> they were all men in that movie. <laughs> That's it. The first time. Oh, damn. Correct answer is centrioles. Oh, I get to get the answer to Gapa. I oh, get to try. You were gonna say ribosomes. I was. I was not gonna say <laughs> centrioles. I can promise you that. How about, ribosomes how about, all over how about you. because I screwed no. that up, we won't take any points away from Hank from oh, this round. Wow! Boned again. Yeah, really, because yeah. I was I, like, I was gonna say something, but it wasn't gonna be centriole. Centrioles are part of most animal cells and some plant cells. They're little cylinders made of groups of tubes, and their job is to help with cell division. As animal egg cells form, they lose their centrioles, and for a long time, scientists thought they developed once an embryo was already a few cell divisions old. Sperm do have centrioles, and scientists already knew that in some animals, like sea urchins, embryos got their centrioles from sperm. But that's not true for mice, whose centrioles develop from centrosomes, collections of fibers that they inherit from their mothers that help with cell division. So, for a long time, Time, scientists figured sperm didn't donate centrioles in any mammals, including humans. But then in 1991, a group of researchers from Australia and Japan tested human eggs that were only just being fertilized and found centrioles that could have only come from sperm. Round number three! Weird facts about marine mammals. Ooh. Some animals practice what's known as lunge feeding, which is exactly what it sounds like. They suddenly <laughs> lunge forward and snap their jaws around a huge mouthful of prey. Yeah. It's a complicated maneuver requiring a high degree of muscle coordination. I've seen Hank do this, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Corn dogs. <laughs> in 2012, researchers discovered an organ in a particular mammal's chin that was basically just a bundle of nerves that they think helps coordinate all these movements. So which animal has the organ? Is it narwhals, dolphins, dwarf sperm whales, or blue whales? Dwarf sperm whales are a thing? Is that your answer? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Incorrect! Hey! Okay. Uh -huh. ah. Um, not a fan of narwhals. Dolphins are jerks. What? So I'm gonna go with the last one, whatever it was. A uh, blue, blue whales? whales? Blue whales. Sure. You are correct, what? sir. See? This is how logic works. The researchers noticed a ball of blood vessels and nerves about the size of a grapefruit just hanging out in the chins of rorqual whales, which include huge whales like humpback whales, fin whales, and blue whales. If you're the type of tiny sea creature these whales eat, you and your friends might notice the 200-ton whale swimming up to you and scatter. So baleen whales, a type of whale with plates for filtering food from water, including the rorquals, snap their jaws forward to catch the whole mouthful at once. And to make sure they don't create a huge wave in the water that moves all the food away, baleen whales expand and their throats so they can take in the extra water. This whole process takes a lot of coordination of different body parts, and the researchers think the chin organ, which is linked to the whale's jaws, throat, and nervous system, keeps everything working together. 
So we finally reached our double or nothing round. Hank has 900 points. Yeah! Phil has 800 points. You can wager as many of those as you'd like on your answer to the next question, which I can only tell you will be about another mysterious whale organ. Oh, Ooh, whale organs. Whale organs. <laughs> While you guys place your bets, we're gonna go to commercial break. Welcome back, you guys have placed your bets. You ready? Here we go. Sperm whales aren't named after their gametes. Instead, they're named after the waxy stuff in their heads called spermaceti, mm -hmm. which just means semen whale in Latin. <clears throat> the spermaceti is produced so sperm whale of pasta. A, a sperm whale has in its head sper semen whale. <laughs> so sperm whales have semen whale in their heads. Little Those Latins. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Go the, on. <laughs> the spermaceti is produced by the spermaceti organ, mm -hmm. and its composition makes scientists think that it might be useful for a few different things. But which of these things does it definitely not do? Help with buoyancy, focus sound for echolocation, keep the whale warm in cold water, or act as a nose cushion? It's in the whale's head? Everybody good? Yeah, I you drew a it. really bad whale. Oh, good. that's what I was just doing. <laughs> Reveal your answers now. It looks like Phil is correct. Oh! oh! So far, scientists haven't been able to prove what spermaceti is for exactly, but they have been able to make some guesses based on its properties and its position in the whale's head. One possibility is that spermaceti helps with buoyancy by becoming a denser solid once the whale dives deep enough. The higher density would help the whale sink deeper into the ocean. It might also help with echolocation by helping focus the sound which is reflected through the spermaceti organ, or it could be a shock absorber. There are lots of other ways spermaceti might be useful to a whale, like by helping close its nose during a dive, and it might have more than one purpose, but it probably doesn't help keep them warm. That is what blubber is for. Oh, that man. That brings you down to 200. Phil, you've got, uh, what, 1,600 yeah. 1.6 times 10 to the 3 darsecs, yeah. Wow. And a uh, blowy whale. Oh, yeah, a blowy whale, whale too! That's a potted plant. It's a pod of whales plant. No, potted pod of whales? Pod, pod of whales. Pod. Oh, boy. Yeah. Well, that makes <laughs> Phil and Guy our winner. Thanks for playing today. I lost for Will. Sorry, Will. <laughs> Oh boy. I'll send you some stuff anyway. <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow Quiz Show. Don't forget to check out Phil on Crash Course Astronomy. You can also find him on Twitter at Bad Astronomer. If you'd like one of our contestants to play for you, you can go to patreon.com slash scishow. And don't forget to go to youtube.com slash scishow and subscribe. Hank GRE on Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs>